The HAL Tejas MK2 project is not just an aircraft but a statement of India's growing technological independence and confidence in indigenous defense manufacturing. The evolution from the MK1 to the MK2 represents years of learning, trial, and refinement. The Indian Air Force has long needed a modern multirole fighter that is agile, efficient, and domestically produced. With the MK2, the aim is to bridge the capability gap between lightweight fighters and heavier aircraft such as the Rafale or Su-30 MKI. This means pilots will have a fighter that is not only powerful but also easier to maintain and more affordable to operate. In many ways, the MK2 is designed to be India's workhorse jet for the coming decades, adaptable for both air superiority and ground attack roles. One major point of progress in the MK2 is its enhanced survivability. The aircraft is expected to incorporate reduced radar cross-section features by using radar-absorbent materials and carefully designed contours that scatter radar waves. While it's not a stealth aircraft like fifth-generation fighters, it will still be much harder to detect than its predecessors. Alongside this, the improved electronic warfare suite will make it more capable of detecting and jamming enemy radar and missile locks. For pilots, this means better survivability in high-threat environments and greater mission success. The onboard radar, an advanced AESA system, gives the jet the ability to track multiple targets at long range and engage them simultaneously, something that brings the MK-2 into the league of much more expensive Western fighters. The cockpit of the Tejas MK-2 reflects the philosophy of modern combat aviation, simplicity, clarity, and automation. Large multifunction displays, touch controls, and an advanced pilot interface will give aviators access to crucial information with minimal distraction. This is coupled with a helmet-mounted display system that allows pilots to target weapons just by looking at a target. Situational awareness is a vital factor in air combat, and HAL's approach in the MK-2 ensures that the pilot remains fully informed and in control. The aircraft's fly-by-wire system will automatically adjust flight surfaces for stability, allowing pilots to perform high-G maneuvers confidently without worrying about losing control. This not only increases combat effectiveness but also reduces training time for new pilots transitioning to the jet. From a maintenance and logistics standpoint, the Tejas MK-2 is expected to be far more efficient than older fighters. HAL has focused heavily on modularity, meaning major components can be replaced or serviced quickly, reducing aircraft downtime. The design includes easier access panels, more reliable systems, and diagnostic sensors that automatically report faults. In the world of air combat, the ability to get aircraft back in the air quickly is as important as their speed or firepower. This maintenance efficiency, combined with a projected long engine life from the GEF 414, should make the MK2 relatively low cost per flying hour, a major advantage over imported alternatives. Another exciting aspect is the potential for export. With many nations seeking affordable yet modern fighters, the Tejas MK2 could become a serious contender in the global market, particularly among countries that prefer not to rely solely on Western or Russian suppliers. If HAL and ADA manage to meet production targets and performance promises, India could position itself as a credible supplier of advanced fighters. This would mark a significant economic and diplomatic milestone, as exporting such technology enhances both national revenue and international influence. The MK2 could thus become a flagship product in India's push for defense. Exports under the Make in India initiative in terms of weapons versatility, the Tejas MK-2 is expected to handle a vast range of armaments. Beyond Indian-made missiles such as Astra, it will be compatible with international weapon systems through modular interfaces. Precision-guided bombs, anti-ship missiles, and even potential integration with the BrahMos NG will make the MK-2 a true multirole aircraft. Its 11 hardpoints provide flexibility for different mission profiles, air combat, deep strike, or maritime attack. The combination of longer range, stronger thrust, and larger payload makes the MK-2 suitable for diverse missions without the need for mid-air refueling for shorter operations. Testing and certification will be crucial milestones in proving the aircraft's capabilities. HAL and the Aeronautical Development Agency plan extensive ground and flight testing once the prototype is rolled out. These tests will verify aerodynamic stability, engine reliability, avionics integration, and weapon systems. Given the lessons learned from the MK-1 program, 
developers are expected to move faster this time while maintaining safety and precision. Each stage, from taxi trials to supersonic flight tests, will provide invaluable data that shapes the production model. Observers anticipate the first flight to attract major attention, symbolizing a new era in Indian aviation. Finally, beyond the numbers and technicalities, the Tejas MK2 represents a sense of national pride. Every rivet and circuit in this aircraft tells a story of perseverance, from early delays and funding challenges to mastering complex technologies domestically. It shows how a developing nation can rise to produce world-class systems through persistence and innovation. For younger generations watching this project unfold, it becomes more than just a fighter jet, it's an inspiration, a demonstration that India can design, build, and fly an advanced aircraft on its own terms. When the MK2 eventually takes to the skies, it won't just mark a milestone in aerospace engineering, it will reflect the spirit of self-reliance and progress.